Is it okay if I insult your intelligence by doing this? Yes, it's okay. Well, okay, I won't really. This would be really insulting if I put the steps there. But the, the methods of isolating or factoring or quadratic formula um, for solving equations, we're going to apply that in this unit. So um, factoring, a couple different kinds of factoring, right? Greatest common factor, 3x, you got x squared minus 4. Once you break it down into factors, I mean, you could do this, x plus 2, oops, x plus 2, x minus 2, difference of squares. <coughs> the concept here is that if this factor is equal to 0, the x has to be 0. If it says that it's all those things multiply to 0, at least one of them has to be 0. So either this is 0, or this is 0, or this is 0. The problem is I think some of you didn't learn it as that concept. You just learned that this is how you learned it. You didn't learn, oh, at least one of them must be zero. You learned, oh, whatever this number is, I just change the sign and write it down, right? That's a way of getting by with that, but it's better to understand what you're doing. If this factor, if at least one of these three factors has to be zero, just make a list of what x has to be to get that to happen. If x was zero, right, x could be zero. Or it could be negative 2 because that's what makes this factor equal to 0, that whole bracket, right? Or it could be positive 2 because that's what makes that whole bracket equal to 0. If you can write it down as a product of factors, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's four factors, then any, any value of the variable that makes one of them 0 works. All right, so there's three solutions to that. It's a cubic equation. There's three solutions. There's no cubic formula. There's a quadratic formula, but there's no cubic formula. This one over here you could factor as 2x, x. I don't really care if you're good at factoring or not at this point. Use the quadratic formula if you want. It doesn't matter. But factoring saves you time sometimes here. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, this is plus 3 and minus 1. All right, you can check that you get the right middle term there. For what we do here, so this means either this factor is 0, which means that 2x minus 1 equals 0. Or the other factor is 0. This factor is equal to 0. Oops. If that factor is equal to 0, it means that x plus 3 is equal to 0. Or in other words, x is equal to minus 3. Or over here, x is equal to 1 half. So there's two solutions here, 1 half and minus 3. If you aren't, if you're challenged at the skill of factoring, you can use the quadratic formula, okay? If you go through and sub the values into the quadratic formula, it, you come up with the same numbers there. You can use the quadratic formula on this. This is a cubic. You can't use a quadratic formula on that. If you use this, I don't care if you show a million steps of subbing into the quadratic formula. For all I care, you can just write down, if, if this is the equation you're trying to solve, you can just write down A equals 2, B equals 5, C equals negative 3. You can write down the quadratic formula. Um, and then write down what x equals. You don't have to show a million steps. It's a grade 11 skill, right? Just like you don't have to show a million steps in what you did from grade 7. You can solve it graphically, which is really important to understand here. Solving something graphically means just graphing it and looking where it's equal to this number over here. If you want to find those values, they are the, they're the x-intercepts, right? They're going to be the x-intercepts because that's where this, where this is 0, okay? So if you, uh, if you put this in here, big mess of stuff. Uh, if you put in 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. So if you graph y equals that, if you graph y equals that stuff, okay, if you're graphing y equals that, and then look where, look, where y, which I'll highlight here for you, you look where y equals the value you want, which is 0, right? If this said a whole bunch of stuff equals 5, you could look where it's 5. 
Or you could simplify it to make it equal 0, which might be a good strategy. But you're looking where y equals 0, right? Because that's the value you want, right? You want to know where that expression okay, is equal to that. Does that make sense? Is that kind of logical? Does it make sense? Don't try to memorize it. Try to understand why it, why it works. When you draw a graph for this, it's giving you all the possible values of that for a whole bunch of different values of the variable, right? When you graph y equals that, it's using a whole bunch of different values of x and giving you the values of y. You only want one specific one. You want to know what's what x value makes y equal to 0. So you can use the graph to find that. If you go back to the graph here, uh, I'm just going to do this quickly because I know it happens to have the solutions in there. Even though you can't see the whole graph, it will go down there. There'll be a vertex down, vertex down there. Maybe we'll change this so that it goes down to that value. Minus 8 and 2 might be okay here. So there's two values you want. You want this value and you want this value. Those are the values you found before, 1 half and negative 3. You can find them on the calculator using this calc menu. 0. If you're finding the x-intercepts, you can find that. You have to give it some boundaries. You have to give it a left bound and a right bound. I know that this is old technology and it's kind of cumbersome, but you need to say a point on the left of the point you're looking for and, the point on the, and a point on the right. You could sit and uh, move the little cursor or you can enter numbers. If you can see that it's between negative 4 and negative 2 somehow, you can just put in the left bound as negative 4 the right bound is negative 2. It wants a guess. As long as you guess between the two boundaries, it finds the number. Okay, the 0 is negative 3. That's the point you're looking for. I forgot to push that uh, start again button, but or the start restart. So we're graphing this because it's some equation we'll never really have to solve. But but you could solve it. You should be saying, wow, do you mean, Mr. Balzarini, that you could solve any kind of equation with, with technology, no matter what it looks like? The algebraic methods you've learned over the years, well, any linear equation you can solve algebraically, but then probably any a lot of the quadratics we make up um, or a lot of weird equations with other things in them, you can't solve algebraically. You can't solve this algebraically. But you can solve it with a calculator. What would be? What would we do? We'd go to this calculator and we'd go, y1 equals. What would we do? What do you think? There's two ways you could do it. What you could do is you could take this side of it and make that y1, and then you could make y2 equal to this side of it. And then you'd get some kind of a graph. I am just going to make this up because I have no idea what it looks like. But let's say that uh, let's say that this one is this blue line here, which I'm sure it doesn't look like that, but it looks like that blue line. And then let's say this one is this red line, and it looks like something like this. How do you find the solution on there? Because what are we looking for? The original equation said, where is this one equal to this one? Where on the graph are they equal? Where are they equal? Yeah, where they intersect, right? Right there. There's one place on that graph where they intersect. Just so there's no complaining, these are not what the graphs look like. I'm just making it up. The other way you could do it is, is this. The other way you could do it is, when you had this original thing here, right? You had this over here, and you had this over here. The other way you could do it is not with two. You could just use one of them. What you could do is you could move both of these terms over to this side. What happens if you move them over to this side? They become negative, right? You could you could kind of put all the terms on one side, which this is very mathematical, moving the, whoops, moving the equal sign around, making it smaller. Um, so what would it be if these became if these ended up on this side? They'd be minus, and what would this become? Minus over here, and then what would be left on the other side? Equals zero, right? So you, you could do that. You could make the whole thing equal 0. And then you could put all of that stuff in as a single function. y1 equals that. And then where would we look? Let's pretend it looks like this. Where do we look on there? Pretend this is the axis here. 
Um, well, it's not going to match my previous one, but if that was the axis, if that was the x-axis, so this is where this is zero. We look where y is equal to zero on the axis, right? You look for the zeros, the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts of this graph are the solutions to that original equation that we have. Again, that's not what the graph looks like, but you get the idea, okay? You can apply that concept here two different ways. Try this one, and we'll see where we are.